Welcome back to another reading vlog. I'm so excited for this one. I've just been craving books and reading so, so much. I've been reading tons recently. Um, so it's very nice to have you here. I hope you are extremely cozy because that's what I want this whole week to be. Today is currently October 5th, I think. No, 6th, something like that. Um, but I'm in the middle of so many different books. I'm about to start a few spooky picks, so I thought it would be a good time to start a reading vlog. I have some book mail to show you guys, and I just have so many options to pick for reads. So let me tell you what I'm currently in the middle of. I'm reading Nicholas Nickleby by Charles Dickens, but that's in a whole other vlog currently. That, um, I think there'll be two episodes of for that Dickens diary thing, so. I also started Nevernight, um, a little, like, before October began, and I'm listening to it on audiobook, and I got about halfway through, and then my loan expired, but it just came back in yesterday, so I have been listening to this pretty much non-stop. I'm currently 286 pages through this. I am loving this. I've had this on my shelves for almost a couple years now, but I've just put off reading it for some reason, but this is a grimdark fantasy. It's by Jay Kristoff. This came out a while ago. It's a trilogy, but I am obsessed. I think I'm obsessed with it. Like, I'm loving it. I'm listening to it so slowly and savoring it so, so much. This one, we follow Mia, who is training to be an assassin with this entity called the Red Church, which is like a school for assassins, and she's going there because she wants to avenge um, the powers that destroyed her family, which is kind of the government, some people in government and stuff like that in this world inspired by ancient Rome and stuff. So I'm loving it. The characters are great. I really, really like Jake Kristoff's writing style. Like I really do. It's very funny to me. I just thoroughly am really enjoying it. The world building. I know lots of people's complaint with this is that the world building is done through footnotes and stuff like that. I actually really like that. I like feeling like I'm kind of reading a history book with footnotes that like you can skip over. They're optional if you want more information about the stuff because I don't think it's lazy world building. Like I think he actually describes a lot of what is going on and like the fact that you could potentially skip the footnotes if you didn't want to get a in more in-depth look into what he's talking about signals to me that the world building is completely sound by itself but like the footnotes just offer like these little delicious tidbits or like side stories or 
um, a bigger explanation of some of the things in this fantasy world. Mia also has the power to kind of control shadows and she also has kind of a sidekick or like this parasitic shadow being that is latched onto her being taking the form of a cat that she calls Mr. Kindly and I love it. I've heard people scream about this book for years and I just am absolutely like eating this up. I'm loving it so much definitely gonna be a new favorite fantasy um there's so many different characters i'm loving the whole assassin school thing like i think it's just done so well it's constantly keeping my attention i think the pacing is great like i said i love the writing so really only gushing things to say about this right now very impressed i'm really liking it and i don't want it to be over um so yeah that is that one this is kind of the priority just because i'm loving it so much it is such a wonderful book to escape into so yeah for the dark academics book club it's currently my pick for october and november so i chose thus were their faces by Silvina ocampo and i'm a little bit of the way through i'm gonna be reading this one super slowly by myself i've been mostly picking this one up during the nighttime because it's been so nice to have kind of mildly spooky kind of scary stories this is a collection of like her fiction and stuff like that um, so I'm currently on the one titled The Imposter, which is about this boy who gets kind of sent into the countryside to stay at this farmhouse with another boy who's been kind of banished there and is already quite gothic and creepy um, and they don't really know like what is going on fully in the barn house, I think. So I don't know. We'll see how this goes. I really do hope it gets quite creepy and stuff like that. This one is translated by Danielle Balderston um, and the preface is by Borges. Last night I started The Murder of Roger Ackroyd by Agatha Christie. If you can see these little sticky notes, I don't know when this vlog is going up but if you can see these little sticky notes I'm currently working on a video with The Murder of Roger Ackroyd. This is book four technically in the Poirot series. I just started it last night so I'm only about an hour through but I'm really liking it. I'm very intrigued because I've heard lots of people have said that it's like her most controversial mystery with one of the craziest endings and like I'm trying to guess it and like figure it out in a video so I'm having a really good time reading this one. I'm just happy to be back with Agatha Christie because it's so cozy. So those are the three books, no I guess four books that I am currently reading. I have a lot of books currently in my Kindle library because I'm doing or I'm trying a Kindle trial and then at the end I'm gonna see if I want to actually buy a Kindle or not. Um, but I also have some audiobook holds in as well, so I guess let's just discuss our options really quickly. So I think I'm gonna start another book on top of these ones because I think I want to. I'm just in the mood to read everything. So I think I'm gonna start The Bloody Chamber in this vlog by Angela Carter. This has also been on my shelves for a really long time, but I'm so excited to finally be picking it up. It's perfect. It's on my October TBR. It's gothic. It's scary. It's a bunch of fairy tale retellings told in like this grotesque, absolutely disgusting, like gory way. So I'm very, very excited for this. Like I am just, I'm ready. And it's only 150 pages long. So I think this one I'm gonna start today. I am in the biggest cozy spooky reading mood. It's a perfect gloomy day. All the trees out there are changing colors. So good. And then I think after I finish Never Nights, I'm gonna pick up The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. But actually a lot of people commented on my last video saying just like do myself a favor and basically don't pick it up just kind of skip this one and go to the next book because lots of people have been absolutely hating this so i think we'll give it a try but like it's just so beautiful and i really did like um the other alex michaelides book i read this year the silent patient i really liked it so i don't know we're gonna give it a try we're gonna give it a little try and see in this vlog so and then like i said i have a bunch of kindle romances that's basically what is on there there's a bunch of fantasy and contemporary romances i know for sure i have about like three emma ham books in my library that i might pick up and then i do really want to try punk 57 by penelope douglas um because i tried a penelope douglas this year and i dnf'd it because i was just kind of bored so we're gonna try punk 57 maybe i'll go through my library and i'll get back to you later but i think what i'm gonna do right now is make a cup of tea clean up the space a little bit because i feel like i just got this carpet if you can't see right here it's very cozy but i feel like i kind of when i moved in i just focused a lot of my decorating energy in my room which i love i love my room out here didn't get quite as much love and the bookshelves 
the bookshelves just want love. They want to be looking a little bit more cozy. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make a cup of tea, clean up out here. I might film a video. I have a book haul I want to film today. It's already quite late in the afternoon though. So we shall see. But um, while I do that, I am 100% going to listen to Never Night because so many things are happening right now. And there is some romance in here as well going down. So... <sighs> Oh my god, I love reading. Welcome to Friday, and boy oh boy, where do I even begin? Okay, where should I start with these reading updates? I guess you last saw me reading The Bloody Chamber by Angela Carter. Wow. So the first story in here is The Bloody Chamber, and I started it and I finished it in two sittings. It's about, I don't know how long it is, it's like that long. It was fantastic. It exceeded expectations everywhere. It was just absolutely phenomenal. Like I am obsessed i was obsessed i think i literally drooled reading the bloody chamber it was everything i wanted everything it promised to be it was so grotesque so gory so violent so sensual so sumptuous it's like reading velvet with your eyes if velvet or satin was like a material to be read this angela carter did it she she translated a material into language it was just gorgeous. It is about this young girl who marries the richest man in France and she gets taken away to his castle um, that kind of overlooks the sea. It's like there's so much beautiful ocean, water, sea imagery. Like it was actually just beautiful. Um, but she very quickly discovers that he is probably not the best man out there. Um, and she discovers a room in his castle called the Bloody Chamber. Fantastic, fantastic. Let me see if I can like read you some of these lines because they were actually gorgeous. Even just this one sentence, she gets like a, a necklace made of rubies. And that's like a huge thing within the story. But it says, everyone stared at me and at his wedding gift. His wedding gift clasped around my throat. A choker of rubies, two inches wide, like an extraordinarily precious slit throat. Take me out. That night at the opera comes back to me even now, the white dress, the frail child within it, and the flashing crimson jewels round her throat, bright as arterial blood. Even the castle as well, the fairy solitude of the place with its turrets of misty blue, its courtyard, its spiked gate, his castle that lay on the very bosom of the sea, with seabirds mewing about its attics. The casements opening on to the green and purple, evanescent departures of the ocean, cut off by the tide from land for half a day. That castle, at home neither on the land nor on the water, a mysterious, amphibious place, 
contravening the materiality of both earth and the waves, with the melancholy of a mermaiden who perches on her rock and waits endlessly for a lover who had drowned far away, long ago. That lovely, sad sea siren of a place. It's just gorgeous. I want to read it again. I want never to stop reading it. This was fantastic. I'm going to 100% give it five stars. Like, I love it. And I promise you the whole short story, at least, of The Bloody Chamber reads like that. I'm now on the second story, um, which is called The Courtship of Mr. Lion, which is a retelling of The Beauty and the Beast, which is also already so gorgeous. So I'm 52 pages into this literally so happy this is definitely i think gonna be a new favorite hopefully so that is that and then ladies and gentlemen this reading vlog is going to destroy me so i got more of the way through nevernight if you can see okay so i was gonna finish it last night i'm 396 pages through i think i have about like 50 pages left this has happened to me before with jay christoph's novels where like i start listening to the audiobook and then suddenly three hours have gone by. I have not moved from my seat. I have just been sitting there wrapped listening. This happened to me um, last year when I read the Illumine files. I remember listening to Illumine and like I just sat on my couch for hours and hours. Um, and that's exactly what happened to me yesterday. Like I woke up and from the time I woke up to the time I left for class, I did nothing else except listen to Nevernight. Like it just has me in its clutches. I am so there. Um, the stakes are so high. So much is happening. Like I said, I'm loving the assassin school. I'm loving all the characters, um, the relationships, the little quirky things. I love Mr. Kindly. I will die for this shadow demon spawn in the shape of a cat. I love him. Um, and like there so much happened last night. Like we're in the final like climax right now and i just wanted to sit there and finish it but my roommate and i had a plan to start watching the devil all the time the movie um and i was like okay fine i'm gonna put this down and i'm gonna finish it tomorrow because like i don't think i'm ready for it to be over yet so that is my plan i'm gonna finish it today um and i did start watching the devil all the time last night did not finish it definitely gonna need a few sittings for that because that movie is just pure pure horror violence unsettlingness that you can only take in like very small doses so we only watched a little bit of that um but if you read the book the devil all the time as well let me know if you liked it and if i should read the book after watching the movie or if the movie did a good enough job kind of thing but this oh, i need the second book i need it right now i am so happy i picked this up i just really loving it and then i read my pages from this collection today already so i'm 50 pages through i'm not getting into this yet like i'm slowly getting a sense of what's going on the first story i don't think is my favorite at all so those are my plans for today i'm gonna finish nevernight i think right now like i'm gonna sit down and finish this right now and then after that, we're either going to start The Maidens or I got a few other audiobooks in, so we'll see. Okay, so I just finished Nevernight. <laughs> no, I liked it too much. I liked it so much. I don't think I've ever read or listened to such a big audiobook in so short a time. Like I flew through that and I was just not expecting stuff that happened in the end. And now I need more. I need more immediately shadow animals and animals are just like my favorite thing and now all i want is a little shadow cat or wolf or something but this was amazing probably like four and a half stars honestly really impressed really enjoyed it like i ate this up and i definitely gonna have to get to the next one as soon as possible i love this so first book of the vlog done i think right now i'm going to just stop reading for a little bit take a break let that digest i think i'm gonna edit a video and then we'll see i want to go to the gym tonight and i also have a bunch of schoolwork to do but this was just amazing
all right good morning so it's like 11 but i just woke up i was up until like <laughs> four last night today's actually what is today sunday now um i did not read anything yesterday i had a pretty busy day but i have made some progress on the maidens i am currently like 40 yeah i'm like 40 pages through I don't know, I'm definitely not into it yet. We're following Mariana, who is the aunt of the girl at Cambridge. And so she's just out, she's just found out that someone at Cambridge has been murdered, her niece is like best friend. And so she's going to Cambridge to check up on her niece and stuff like that. But a lot of the writing I'm kind of noticing now, especially having like a physical copy of one of his books is that it's just a bit overbearing. Like it's a bit over much in the references it makes to Greek myth and like ancient stories and stuff like that. It's just a bit too spot on and they're all explained. They're all like put down in quite obvious trite language a little bit. Like she sometimes felt she had been cursed as if by some malevolent goddess in a Greek myth. And like describing different people, like she's just always putting them in the context of the ancient Greeks and Greek myth, which I understand to an extent, but I don't think it needs to be that like flashy and like upfront about it. I think we'll get it, like I think we'll get the references. So like I said, definitely not into it yet. I'm gonna keep going because I'm only 40 pages in, but we shall see. Hiya, it's a little bit later now. I'm actually just about to go out for dinner. I'm gonna get some sushi, which I'm really excited about, but I do have a few reading updates. So for some reason, like I am not really enjoying The Maidens right now, but it's going by really, really quickly. Like I'm already, 60 no i'm already 70 pages through and like it's really not a long book by any means but like it's really flying by which i really was not expecting but i kind of think that i have a good idea unfortunately of what's going on so mariana our protagonist she's the aunt of zoe who's the girl who goes to cambridge and she goes down to cambridge but we find out that she has had a pretty traumatic past pretty much everyone in her life that she's loved like her parents her sister her husband they're now dead and i'm thinking that she definitely holds a grudge or has quite traumatic experiences and memories connected to greek mythology because her husband died while they were on vacation in Greece. He drowned in the ocean. This is like right in the beginning, so don't worry. But um, previously she and him had gone to a temple devoted to Demeter and Persephone and she had, you know, prayed for their marriage and all of that stuff. And then directly after he died. So I feel like she has some sort of vengeance <laughs> against the Greek gods. Um, and that's definitely gonna play into her role of like, taking on this Greek tragedy professor, which I just, if that's the case, if that ends up being the case, I think that's a little bit of a weak motive and just kind of, I don't know. I'm 70 pages through it. They think they've caught the killer. Um, they definitely haven't. And that's about all I can say about that. I'm not loving the writing right now. Um, I don't know if I would actually like the writing in The Silent Patient by the same author if I read it myself, but just because I'm listening to the audiobook. Um, is something you're paying a little bit less attention to, but regardless, I'm gonna keep going with this um, But I think I know where it's headed. So anyway, I really have not read too much more of the bloody chamber I'm now on the short story called the tiger's bride um, And what is this a retelling of? I don't know yet. I don't know what it's a retelling of. I don't even care like this is what I've been waiting for <laughs> my whole life i feel like this is just amazing so those are my two spooky reads on the go i'm also still reading the murder of roger Ackroyd, which is really good i'm trying to crack this case in a video i have no leads i really don't have any clue but um i really should be reading nicholas nickleby i've been putting it off for a few days now but i just have not been in the dickens mood at all which is really unfortunate because nothing in me right now oh i'm still reading this too but i need to read some more of this today nothing in me right now wants to pick this up um, I'm a little over halfway through, am I? No, I'm like exactly halfway through and I need to be much further, but um, I've just have not been <laughs> motivated recently to pick this up. So maybe I should just film more of my Dickens vlog, which is coming this time, I promise. So um, then maybe I'll pick it up, but that is the stack. This is the stack on the go along with Agatha Christie's book. And I might start a Kindle Unlimited romance tonight because I just want something a little different from the spookiness um and nicholas nickleby has some like cool victorian spooky elements in it too so that is the stack i also wanted to show you guys some things i recently got and we can do a cute little haul i bought 
I went out with my mom yesterday. I got a bunch of stuff while we were out. Some stuff for the apartment and there was also some stuff in my P.O. box. So let me show you. Okay, so I was gifted these bookmarks. They are beautiful. I posted about these on Instagram a while ago, but these are the really, really gorgeous like cloth um, bookmarks. These are actually from Greece and they are from Bookla. So I will leave the link to them down below. Um, they also donate like a portion of their earnings to help vulnerable groups in Athens. And this one is so pretty, the cherry blossoms. And then I really do like the whale as well. They're just, the quality is amazing. Um, they're like made on a loom. So thank you so much Bookla for sending those to me. They are lovely, they're so soft. I also got a message from a fellow booktuber asking if she could send me her poetry book. And I was like, yes, of course, please, you always can. Um, and so she gave me Not a Myth. That is what this collection is called. And this is by Molly Likovich and Maria Ring. I honestly don't know if that says ring. It's really hard to read the font, um, but this is not a myth in its collection, like about fairy tales and different things like that. Combines fantasy and the real world in such a way to make everyone feel as though they're living in a storybook. So that is this one. It is just sitting on my shelf right now. So I will definitely be reading that. It's quite short. So hopefully it'll give me some witchy, spooky poetry vibes for Halloween. As well, I've been trying to find like a, I wasn't sure, oh wait, I was showing you this rug. I also got a rug here. As you can see, it's very soft and fuzzy. I will try to link it down below. I did decide that I finally wanted like a nice little rug and I have been debating about getting a coffee table or not, but in the end, I just decided to get this little table. It's black like marble um, and it is quite short, but it works really nicely because it really doesn't take up too much space, but you can still like sit there and put your drink on it and stuff. So I am actually really happy that I found this one and then the bottom i just put my annotation stuff as well as some big books because i've been rearranging my shelves today because i ran out of room um on a bunch of places so you'll see like the phantom shelf got revamped to hold more books um and there's been a lot of stacking occurring which my bookshelves definitely don't like they're gonna they're gonna do like the little arc thing it's a little messy in here right now but it is looking and feeling quite cozy the rug just makes everything so cozy and i just want to like sit on it and read all day
come here. Come, okay, okay. We all here? We're here. Um, so I finished the Maidens. Uh, yeah, I finished this yesterday. And wow, <laughs> not good. I really should have listened. A lot of you warned me in one of my more recent videos before I picked this up that it was really not good. And I am submitting a formal apology now because you were right. Um, and I didn't listen. I really don't know what to say about this. I think I said that I had a pretty good inkling of what was going on, uh, like 30 pages in, and I was correct. There was nothing thrilling about this, nothing really surprising. Um, the, the main, okay, let's start with the main character, Mariana, the aunt um, of the girl who's going to Cambridge. She is just a potato. Like there is no personality. There's absolutely nothing there. Um, I'm not really sure who she is. This book was also extremely boring because of our protagonist, because she was so boring. Um, the characters were all so flat in here. This book just felt like an absolute mess. It was so boring because almost every single scene like takes place in like a cafe or a restaurant and they're just sitting down to talk and like speculate and interview. Like literally there were like eight or nine scenes like that um, back to back to back, which were really hard to get through. On top of that, the like believability level of this book was really taken out just in like the simple uh, way that Mariana just like got herself into the situation and tried to be like a detective even though she's literally just a random group therapist from London she's like doing police work and breaking into crime scenes and yeah like she would just be charged with obstructing the justice pretty early on I would hope so that just kind of seems not believable to me this whole thing just ended up being really stupid, I'm not gonna lie. Very contrived. The contrivances were many. Um, and just overall, so disappointed. I gave it, I think, a generous two stars. One thing I will say is that like this book flew by so quickly. Like I can't remember the last time I listened to a book and it just felt like it started and it was over, which ended up being a blessing in the end, but cannot recommend this. Um, at least based on a book that like I really liked. I'm sure some people out there and I know lots of people out there like it But it does seem either like some people give it one star or five stars based on the reviews on Goodreads. I was reading so Really upset about this one. This one was not good. Those are my little thoughts on the maiden So we'll definitely say more about this in my wrap-up, but overall so bad. The Bloody Chamber, on the other hand, is not letting me down. I'm now 93 pages through. I'm currently on Puss in Boots. That's the fairy tale that I'm currently in the middle of. And I'm still really, really enjoying this. I'm really taking my time with it just because absolutely loving this so much. Like it's just so decadent and luscious and beautiful and grotesque and gothic and you just like delight in it so much like it just feels luxurious um i'm almost on the first short story in less where their faces i'm really not like 100 percent there yet with the collection and maybe it's just this one short story although it's kind of a little bit long but i'm not loving it so i'm hoping the ocampo book picks up a little bit after the first short story is done, which like I'm almost finished, but. So now that I finished The Maidens, I can thankfully move on to something else. I have three audiobooks in currently right now. So I think the last thing I wanna do in this vlog is show you, show you the ones that I'm gonna pick. So the first one I have in is The Ghost Bride by Yang Shi Chu. And this one is set in, I think the late 1800s. And we follow a girl who gets betrothed to a spirit or a ghost. I also have in A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. The audiobook just came in for this. Um, it's been a really long time since I read the first book, though we shall see. I'm not sure if I'm gonna start it now, although I am kind of in the mood for this, honestly, at the moment. And finally, we have in Strange Practice by Vivian Shaw. This one is about like necromancy or monsters or something like that. I think what I'm gonna do is start the Ghost Bride first, and then maybe pick this one up if I'm not loving the Ghost Bride. Like I'll just start sampling the Ghost Bride and then see, so then we'll get into this. But those are my final reading updates. I think I'm gonna close this vlog off here and start another one um, since today, what is even today? I don't even know. We're well, in, we're well into spooky season though. So um, let me know what you guys are reading because I really wanna know what you are currently picking up for spooky season because like I do have a TBR, but I'm always open to like swap things out and try books that, you know, 
people are yelling at me, I should try. So um, yeah, I hope you're doing so well. I really, really do. I hope you're taking care of yourself. I hope you're reading fantastic books of your dreams. Um, and until the next time, I will see you very, very soon. Ciao.